You're listening to FBC Radio on 16.9. church and community today is the 5th of july 2020 and that means yes you're right we've made it into yet another month of lockdown so give yourself a round of applause And whilst we're still in celebration mood, let's also remember that today is our 38th church anniversary. So why not turn to someone else in the room or if you're on your own, just address yourself and say, Happy anniversary, you're looking good for 38. Happy Happy anniversary, anniversary, you're looking good good for for 38. So on this day of celebration, let's start by reminding ourselves that everything we are and everything that we do is all for the glory of Jesus, who died for us and on the greatest day in history, rose again from the dead. Lord, we thank you for this new day and thank you for your faithfulness throughout the last 38 years of our church's life. Thank you for the words of life, the words of truth and the words of hope that have been preached through Frimley Baptist Church. Thank you for all of those who have given their time to teaching the children and the youth about the love of God. And thank you for all the young people themselves who have been on the receiving end of that teaching. 
Thank you for bringing salvation and healing and purpose to many people who've come through the doors of our building over the years. And thank you for the equipping of so many to be able to go out from the church and to serve you in their community, in this country and throughout the world. Thank you for the opportunity of seeing many people baptised, many babies dedicated and couples declaring their love for each other through the act of marriage. Thank you for the opportunity to provide hundreds of hours of prayer in our building and in our homes for personal, local, national and international needs. Thank you for all the opportunity we've had to give of our finances to be a blessing to people near and far. Thank you for the friendships that have been made and nurtured within the church family and the local community. Lord, for the years, all 38 of them, that you have kept and guided us, and for so much more, we give you our thanks today. In Jesus' name, Amen. children's talk this morning is being given by Tim or at least I think it's Tim. Good morning everybody and uh, today is a real day for celebration. Um, this weekend we've all been allowed to go and get a haircut again and after 113 days of lockdown you can see that I'm getting a little bit fed up with my hair. So I'm really looking forward to being able to go and sort that out. But that's not the only reason to be happy today. So we're also remembering that 38 years ago, this weekend, Frimley Baptist Church was founded to serve the community that we're in. And uh, over those years, Frimley Baptist Church has done 
many good things and um, we're here today to remember that and the, and the founding of the church. Aside from those things, uh, other things have happened uh, in history uh, on these days and I've got a few things just to uh, for you to think about. So it was on this day in history that the National Health Service was founded and that's uh, an organisation that we very much depended on in the last few months during the pandemic. It was on this day in history that the BBC made its first television news broadcast and that's developed into something that we see today and follow every day. It was on this day in history that this gentleman, a man called William Shockley, invented something called the transistor and transistors are used in all electronic devices that we use today and enable me to talk to you today. And another event that happened this weekend in history uh, was the Declaration of Independence in the US from the British. And uh, the uh, Americans celebrate that every year on the 4th of July. So I've got a little challenge for you, which is which year do you think these events happened on? So I'm going to give you just a few moments uh, to talk about that with your families and, uh, uh, and guess which year these things happened. Could a great big girl, he's always by my side. Could a great big girl, by my side, by my side. Could a great big girl, he's always by my side. Could a great big girl, by my side. So let's see how you got on with that. The National Health Service was founded in 1948, just after the war. And that enables everyone in the country to access free health care. The first television bro news broadcast by the BBC was made in 1954. And that's really changed the way that news has been shared uh, of events that are going on in the world. The transistor was invented in 1951. The rate of uh, development of electronics has been really incredible. Uh, it's really changed the way that we live our lives. So all these events have, have changed things and uh, relatively recent events. But uh, the Independence Day was a little bit longer ago. It was in 1776. So looking back at events uh, can remind us how uh, at the lives we live today have been shaped. An event that I remember very fondly happened 25 years ago this month. And it was the day that I got married to Helen. And uh, when I look back at that day, I remember it was a very happy day. So I remember the joy that uh, we had when we first uh, got married and uh, started living our lives together. Um, but when I look back, I also am thankful. I'm thankful for uh, all that Helen has done for me uh, and all the things that we've been able to enjoy together and the, the family that we have. But when I look back, I also remember the promises that we made. So we, we started out our lives and in a wedding, you, you make promises to each other to love and to hold and to cherish from this day forward going, going on. And uh, that's very much a promise that I made and I still want to keep today. So if we think about the times we're in now when we're thinking about uh, looking back at events happened in the past, I wonder what things in the future when we look back at 2020 we'll remember. We'll remember a time when there were no cars on the road. We'll remember the wearing of face masks. So, protect others from catching coronavirus. Is that something that's really changed the way we live? Will we remember the annoying long hair that we've all ended up with? Maybe there'll be uh, a tradition of growing our hair for three, three months and then having a national haircut day, who knows? Or will we remember the appreciation that we've given to the workers in the NHS? Uh, and all the care that they've given to people that have been sick. Or we will remember 
help that's been given to homeless people. At the start of the pandemic, an organisation here called Greenlight helped in housing uh, all, all our homeless people in London. And at that time, everyone was got off the street, uh, something that wasn't thought possible before the pandemic. Or we'll remember, closer home, the foundation of FBC Radio. And this is something that uh, has come about because of the change in the, the, the pandemic that's caused it to happen. But uh, maybe it's a good thing and reached people that we would otherwise not have been able to, to reach. So as today we're celebrating the anniversary of Frimley Baptist Church, we can be thankful for all the things that the church has been able to do in the 38 years since it was founded. It's run numerous groups uh, for young people. We've got children's church, we've got uh, groups for babies, we've got youth groups and so on. And uh, that's a way that the church has been able to share the good news of Jesus in the community. And that reminds me of a verse from Isaiah, which says, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up, do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And what that says is that even in difficult times, God is at work. God is with us and he's working in us. And some of the things that we've started during these times are things that maybe God has been prompting us to do. So as we go forward and uh, when we're looking back in 2030, maybe some of these things that we've started, will we look back and that say that that was the beginning of something new. And now it's time for Family News. Thank you to all those who over the last few weeks have provided us with creative talks for the children. I wonder from these pictures how many of the talks you can remember. Don't forget all of our previous online services, including the children's talks, can be heard again anytime by going to our website www.fbc.org.uk, clicking on resources, then sermons, and then clicking on full service on YouTube. So we have mentioned the children, but what about the youth? What has happened to them since lockdown? Well, let's find out. In December 2019, Frimley Baptist Church youth was thriving. The reindeer games were going on, youth club was growing, and then 2020 hit. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. Hello from the Johnsons. Hello from the Johnsons. Hi. Hi everyone. FBC Youth is still thriving. Even though we haven't been able to meet in person, our groups have still been meeting over Zoom on Monday, Friday and Sunday. Additionally, we've carried on collaborating with Campbell Youth for Christ to produce Thursday faith videos, Monday challenges, and we've even joined TikTok to give young people something to laugh at. At the heart of everything we're doing through this lockdown period is an insistence that we are not going to let Social distancing mean emotional isolation. If you want to find out more about what we're doing as a youth ministry through lockdown, you can email me, stephen.fenwick at fbc.org.uk. This week I'll be sending out some prayer notes to our small groups and to our prayer ministry team. If you would like to hear anything, please do get in touch with me. I'm more than happy to chat to you. And on behalf of myself and the whole youth ministry here at Frimley Baptist Church, have a lovely week.
Although our building has not been used much recently, a big thank you to Bianca, who has faithfully been keeping the inside of our building clean throughout the whole of lockdown. And what a good job she has been doing. As mentioned earlier, today is our 38th anniversary as a church. On the 3rd to the 4th of July 1982, Camberley Baptist released us, or the technical term is they dismissed us from being under their wing and we formally became known as Frimley Baptist Church. Anniversaries are a good time to look back with thanksgiving to God for his faithfulness and also to express our gratitude to all those who stepped out in faith right back at the start, not knowing what was ahead. And if you're one of those original 70 members or you were part of the early pioneer ministry of the church, then we want to say thank you for your commitment and example and acknowledge that you played an important part in helping FBC become what it is today. And in today's service, we want to thank God for the current makeup of Frimley Baptist Church and to thank him for the strength and the hope that we can all continue to place in him. And to help us to do that, a couple of weeks ago, over 70 of our current church all said that they would be willing to take part in creating a music video that we could show today. Each were given a line of a song and it was left up to them as to how they displayed their words when Nigel visited them to film them. Well, Nigel has now completed the filming and he's edited it all together. Members of our music team have provided the music and now I'm very pleased to be able to introduce our own church's presentation of the song Everlasting God, Strength Will Rise.
Thank you to everyone who took part in helping to make that video possible. After this service, it will be uploaded to our church's YouTube channel as a separate video so you can see it again if you want to and you can forward it to others in order to encourage them to wait upon the Lord also. And that brings us to the end of... Family News! Richard is now going to bring the reading from God's Word for today, after which John will lead us in prayer. Reading from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 13. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Continue to remember those in prison, as if you were together with them in prison, and those who are mistreated, as if you yourselves were suffering. Marriage should be honoured by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have, because God has said, Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Lord, you know the state of the world in which we live. You know better than we do the injustice, oppression and violence that exists. We join with Amos and many others through history and today and ask that justice might roll down like rivers and righteousness an everlasting stream. Please let us live and pray so that we help to remove all class and rank and social distinctions. Help us to be like Jesus, just as Paul said, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. He humbled himself. Lord, would you sabotage human ideas and institutions that support injustice, even when they themselves don't even realise it. Where we have wrong attitudes to others, please help us to see them. Enable us to change by the power of your Holy Spirit, so that we have the mindset of Christ. Lord, we ask that the leaders of every nation might humble themselves and come to you, and ask for wisdom to lead just as King Solomon came and asked you for wisdom to lead his people. As we remember our church anniversary today, we say thank you for those who saw your vision and heard your call to plant a Baptist church in Frimley. Thank you for all those who have helped us as we walk our path of faith. Help us to be a church that shines for you and makes disciples. The government has this week issued guidance for the restarting of church services. Please give the ministry team wisdom as they seek to interpret this in the physical space of our building so that people can be kept safe.
We continue to pray for those who are grieving loved ones who have died over recent months, where they have not been able to say goodbye in the way that they would want because of the restrictions that have been in place. Father, let them know that you are with them. Help them to feel your presence and provide for them any practical help and support that they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. This week we have Joff Hunt as our speaker. Joff is our Regional Minister in Southern Counties Baptist Association and we're very pleased to be able to welcome him to our online service today. Before he speaks, let's sing another song that reminds us that the God that we serve is faithful in all of his ways.
Hi, I'm the Reverend Jonathan Hunt, known by many as Joth, and I'm a regional minister for the Southern Counties Baptist Association. In fact, I'm your regional minister for Frimley Baptist Church. Uh, and I want to thank Glyn for this opportunity and invitation to just share with you on your church anniversary. Uh, I've brought you down here to a special spot to particularly introduce you to a good friend of mine uh, called the Itchen River. I've been coming down to the Itchen River and running along the Itchen River and doing some walks along the Itchen River uh, over the last few months and weeks and it's become, an, become a really precious and special place for me. So I thought that you know, during the easing of lockdown uh, it'd be nice to get out and about and to share some of my favourite spots with you. Uh, in fact, actually on Saturday the 30th of May, a friend of mine, Declan, and I decided that we would actually walk the whole of the Itchin River. It's called the Itchin Navigation or the Itchin Way. And we started back in uh, Southampton at the Itchin Bridge and we made our way north uh, through Riverside where we are at this point in time uh, onto Eastleigh and then Bishopstoke and onto Winchester and then we bear east and we followed the river all the way to the source which is found in a place called New, New, uh, New Cheriton. Uh, it's a beautiful walk and it's a beautiful river to, to follow. We were pretty exhausted by the end of it. Yeah, it took us about 12 hours and it was about 30 miles that we walked on that day in total. Do you know, walking along a river or, walk, or doing any walk uh, means that you have to leave the past behind and step into the present and move on into the future. And coming down here and doing some running but also doing some walking uh, is, is been an opportunity for me to reflect on my own Christian life, but also the life of the church. For many of us, we sense that in this moment of coronavirus, we're at a bit of a crossway in life, in our Christian journey as church particularly. If you're going to finish a walk, if you're going to start at the beginning and finish at the end, you need to step out of the past, you need to step into the present and then on into the future. And you have to keep doing that. You know, the past it has to be left behind and you have to keep going. Which reminds me of the passage in Hebrews, Hebrews 13, and that precious verse, verse 8, where the writer says this, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and for, forever. And the writer is trying to encourage his readers to say to them that Jesus is with us all the time. He's been with us in the past, he's with us in the present, and he will continue to be with us in the future. He is our Lord for yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I want to read to you uh, the passage again, but this time I just want to take the version that is the translation given by Tom Wright in his little book about Hebrews. Tom Wright translates that passage in Hebrews 13 like this. Let the family continue to care for one another. Don't forget to be hospitable. By that means, some people have entertained angels without even realising it. Remember people in prison as though you were in prison with them. When you think of people who are having a difficult time, remember that you too live in a frail body. Let marriage be honoured by everyone. Let the marriage bed be, remain undefiled. God will judge those who sleep around or commit adultery. Keep your life free from love of money. Be content with whatever you have. He himself has said, after all, I will never ever leave you or forsake you. That's why we can be cheerfully confident and say, the Lord is helping me. I'm not going to be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke God's word to you. Look carefully at how their lives came to complete fruition and imitate their faith. Jesus the Messiah is the same yesterday, today and forever. Let me take a few moments just to unpack some of that passage for you. But as we do so, 
let me take you to one or two of the other places that are, are my favourite spots along this Itchin River, this Itchin Way. So here we are further up the river, we're just north of Banbridge, uh, just south of Shawford, about nine miles up from the Itchin Bridge. Do you know, to get to the present, we always must walk through the past. I have found there are two misguided views of the past. You get the, uh, the view that the past is over-glorified, it's over-romanticised. People look back and say, oh, it's so much better back in the past. And then you get that other view which almost rejects the past. It says there's nothing worth remembering of the past. And, and it, it tends to ignore the journey that's gone before. When I, uh, when I go for a walk quite often, and I guess you do too, I quite often will take pictures. And then later, a day or two, or maybe even months later, I'll look back on that journey that I've been on and remind myself of the occasion, the joy of it, those moments, those special, beautiful spots that I particularly wanted to captivate and keep. But it doesn't mean that I need to remain in the past. The past is something that belongs to Jesus, that is part of him. Hebrew writer says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And of course the past is his and there's so much for us to learn from the past. But we need to step forward from the past into the present. Our river is the same river. Wherever you are on this Itchin River, it is the Itchin River, whether you're at the source of the river or whether you're down at the base of the river, at the Itchin Bridge, it's the same river. And actually, it's the same, same bit of water that will travel that whole river. But the scene around the river changes. And we, as people, as we travel through history and we move into the unknown, need to recognise that the scene will change as we move forward. It's not that we reject the past, we celebrate the past, we give thanks to the past, we learn from the past, but we also step in to the future, into the present and then on into the future. Do you know, church anniversaries and AGMs actually are great times for us to look back, to remember, to get the old photo album out and to, to look at what happened and to give thanks and to celebrate the good things that God has done. And that's so important that we do that. So the writer of, this, of the Hebrews here in Hebrews 13 named a whole number of things that are important from the past that we need to remember and that we need to keep hold of. He says, keep on loving one another. He says, do not forget to show hospitality. He says, continue to remember those in prison, those who are ill-treated. He reminds them that marriage is to be honoured. He, he encourages them to keep their lives free from the love of money, to keep doing that, uh, to grow in contentment in God and to become confident. These are all things that they have learnt and grown in in the past. And these are things not to be left behind. It's almost as if there's things in the past that we need to grab hold of, pick up and continue. Just as Jesus was the same yesterday, today and forever, so must be the church's love, so must be the church's hospitality, so must be the church's care, so must be the church's commitment to each other and faithfulness to each other, so must be the church's confidence in God. Those are things of the past that he celebrates and he particularly celebrates them in the heroes of faith in, in Hebrews chapter 12. These things we carry on from the past into the present. But we have to step out of the past into this moment, the present moment. So let's get going because we've got a long way to go. So welcome to Compton Lock. This is one of my favourite spots but it's also a favourite spot of many others. In fact at a, at a weekend, a hot weekend, this place will be heaving. Now, kids will be in the water, people will be having picnics. It's a, it's a busy place. 
in Hebrews 1, sorry, Hebrews 13, verse 8, the writer says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I quite often wonder whether we as Christians uh, emphasize the yesterday and the forever and often forget the moment of today. We're interested in what God has done, of course we are, and that's really, really important. And we're absolutely fascinated with what God is going to do. But what is God doing now? Jesus Christ is in the present, in the moment. When I did my walk with Declan, uh, we, we stopped here and rested for a while. And uh, there was a scene where a young lad was in the water and he was having a great time. In fact, actually, I, I put my feet in the water for a while and it was freezing cold. But he got into the water once he got used to the temperature. He was having a great time and his dad was on the side of the river and he's beckoning his dad in. He's calling his dad to come and enjoy the moment. He was in the moment. If I had stopped him at that moment and said, hey, friend, what, what did you do yesterday and what are you going to do tomorrow? I think he would have been quite confused. He was so immersed in the moment that he was just enjoying it, having fun, and particularly wanted his dad, his loved one, to enjoy that moment too. We, we mustn't miss the moment. However much we might want to reminisce about the past, and however much we're keen to know what the future has before us, it is today that we find ourselves in the present. I'm interested in the word present, you know, that this is the present moment. We are present within it, but also God is present with us. And it is in this moment that God wants to do his greatest work. I think the writer of the Hebrews knows that the, the early Christians that received that, that epistle, that, that letter for the very first time, were in a difficult moment and to be reminded that Jesus was with them was absolutely crucial. Stop for a moment. What moment are you in at this point in time and how, and how are you recognising and noticing what God is doing in your life? And whether it be a moment of difficulty, a moment of suffering, a moment of hardship, or maybe it's a moment of celebration and rejoicing and joy, whatever it is, recognise the moment and remember that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Let's move further on and make our way up towards Winchester. This is Hockley Viaduct, just south of Winchester. In fact, it's one of the few points where you can get above the Itchen River and see further ahead. We live in strange times, don't we? Words like Zoom and furlough and phrases like, I cannot hear you, and uh, what will be the new normal have come to the forefront of our vocabulary in recent times. The world, it seems, is pivoting, and we're unsure about what tomorrow and what the future might bring. Sue and I uh, recently, yesterday actually, last night, were watching the film Peter Rabbit. And uh, in Peter Rabbit there's this wonderful character, the cockerel. And the cockerel wakes each morning with great surprise that there is a morning. And no one, no one told me that this was going to happen, that the sun was going to rise again. And he's so excited about the new day. Do you know, we shouldn't be surprised that there will be a tomorrow. We can almost be guaranteed that we will move from today into tomorrow. But we can take two extreme positions when we think about the future. We can take the position, which I often fall into, where I get overexcited about the future. And I overplan, I overprepare, I overthink, and there is a danger that we can do that so much that actually we forget about the moment of today. But the other position is that we can become over-fearful of the future. The future looks uncertain and we become afraid of what might be before us. The writer of the Hebrews understands that those first readers would have been afraid of the future. There were good and real reasons why that would have been the case. 
And he continually wants to, all the way through this epistle, to encourage them that the Lord Jesus, who is the Lord of yesterday, is the Lord of today and will be the Lord of tomorrow. He does that in chapter 1, he does that in chapter 10 particularly, where he encourages them to persevere in their faith. He says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as we see that day approaching. He wants to encourage them to step forward. They don't know what the future will bring. Do you know, the, uh, the film Back to the Future was just a fictitious story. No one has been to the future. No one can come and tell us what is ahead of us. But what we can be certain of is that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. And our confidence is not so much in what will happen, but in who we travel with. So let's get going and see if we can get slightly further up the river. So I brought you to this last little favourite spot of mine. We're just east of Winchester in a little place called Overton Village. And just across this bridge is a lovely little pub called The Bush Inn. Uh, we arrived at this place and rested on, on our walk, but by the time we got here, in fact actually there's another five miles to go before you get to the source of the river in Cheriton. And uh, when we arrived here, I was beginning to feel quite exhausted. Uh, blisters on my feet, uh, my legs were beginning to seize up. I was beginning to struggle. In fact, actually the last five miles were really the toughest. When the writer of the Hebrews wrote that book, he suspected that the years ahead, the, the years that were ahead of this, this group of people that were reading it for the first time were going to be the toughest. But often the toughest part is the last part of a journey. In fact, actually for some of them, it was going to mean death for their faith. And so he wanted to encourage them right from the beginning of his, his letter to the end that God is with them, that Jesus remains to be Lord all the way through it. Through the good and through the bad, through the difficult, through the tough times, he remains to be the Lord. Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. When I arrived at the end of my walk, I was absolutely delighted to see my wife. In fact, I'm always delighted to see my wife, but on this occasion I was particularly delighted to see her. She had arrived with the car. She said I looked like an old man walking up the street and I was really hobbling by that point but to see her face to face was such a joy. And that's the promise that we have. That's the promise of the writer of the Hebrews. That's the promise of the Bible, is that as we walk into the future, as we move with Jesus, as we are reminded that he is the Lord of the past, the present and the future, and that he will always be with us, that one day we will be filled with joy as we see him face to face. I wanted to finish this time by just sharing a little benediction written by the writer of the Hebrews. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. And that brings us to the end of today's anniversary service. Thank you for being part of it, and I hope you'll be able to join us again next week. May you find strength in the Lord as you put your hope in him this week. You've been listening to FBC Radio on 16.9.